Hi there, YouTube. We're Carlos here. I am bringing to you today a early tier limit deck profile of just a simple version of how I would play the deck if Dust was no object and if I could play any card that I want. We'll start from the top. Uh, one Herald. We are playing the 11 fairies in total. The odds that Herald is live are very good. Maxi, this card doesn't need an introduction. Diviner is a solid normal summon, and it's also something that can be reborn off of Sprite Elf. Two Merly, two Halfness, and two Siren, because that's all we're allowed to play. One Snow, as this is a milling deck, and Snow is an excellent extender for both Link plays and Rank 4 plays. Three copies of Rhino Heart. Uh, it's our main starter of the deck and one of our main normal summons. Arguably stronger or less strong than Diviner. I have maxed out on the Shizus, so two Keldo, three Mudora, two Kelbeck, and two Agito. This is all we're allowed to play, so it's all that I will play. These cards, you know them very well. Agito and Kelbeck are the Toxic Millers, and Keldo and Mudora are the Shufflers, which give Tier Lament its unrivaled graveyard control. As that is what Tier Lament is. It is, in essence, a control deck that is disguised as a combo deck. After that, there's a few power one-ups of Foolish Burial, Terraforming, and Instant Fusion. Arguably, Terraforming and Instant Fusion are mandatory. Foolish Burial is not, but it is still a strong extender or a strong starter. Along with that, we have one copy of the Field Spell and three copies of Tier Lament Scream. Tier Lament Scream is a very good card. It can be a little bit bricky sometimes, especially with a lower density of tier names in the main deck. But it's definitely a card that you don't mind resolving twice in one turn. Ideally, you want to be resolving the milling effect and you want to be resolving the graveyard effect to search for a trap card. For the last bit of spells, we have uh, three copies of Triple Tactics Talent. This is an excellent card in the mirror. It's good when you're going first and it's strong when you're going second as well. For our tier traps, I have one Crime and two Sullyuk. Choosing not to play Metanoise right now and just sticking to these three, all of their effects are very relevant. Sullyuk is a permanent imperm and Crime is a counter trap, so you know it's good. But moreover, if Crime is milled, it can be used to add back a banished tier limit name. So if your opponent DD crowed you or shifted you earlier in the game, Crime can be used when it's milled to add that name back. Imperm is a strong non-engine as it's good going first or second. It can be used for board breaking and as a hand trap. And an Imperm on Kid Kalos can sometimes end your opponent's turn depending on what else is in their hand. For the extra deck, the fusions, we have one Mud Dragon, one Kid Kalos, one Drago Stapelia, one Rule Kalos, and one Kaleida Heart. Master Duel did not release Garura right now, so these are basically our five main fusions. If you are playing different engines in your deck, you can choose to play other fusions than this, but these five are mandatory. Baron is excellent uh, when you're playing Diviner. Dweller is excellent against the Mirror Match and a lot of other decks too. Baguska is your plan B if you get shifted. Redoer is both an extender and it can also be a part of your end board. It detaches its materials for effect, which means that if you have a Siren or a Rhino Heart underneath a Redoer, you can detach them for effect, and then they'll get their effect in the graveyard as if they were milled. Dugaris is a flexible extender. It can be used to reborn something from the graveyard if that's important. It can be used to increase the attack of something, which can come up for outing uh, monsters with high attacks that can't be targeted. Generally speaking, those are monsters that tier limits struggle with or you could just use it for the draw and discard to extend. Zeus needs no introduction. Asa is good because it combos well with the fairies and it's also great in the mirror as you can use it to force out your opponent's shufflers. If you go Asa and target one of your opponent's shufflers, they're basically forced to use that shuffler right away or else you will get to use it on your field. Dark has a similar application as well as most notably, it is a bridge into Sprite Elf. Sprite Elf is a part of your end board as well as an extender. It can be used to special summon either Merly or Diviner. And Underworld Goddess is the remaining flexible slot. You don't have to play it, but it's another out to untargetable monsters with high attack value. For example, Abramax, um, the Arrival at Ignister, a Guardian Chimera from a branded player can be very difficult to out if they have a Polyan Graveyard and you do not have 
either scream nor plan it up to boost your attacks. I would say that the flexible slots in this extra deck are Dugaris as number 15, Underworld Goddess as number 14, Asa as number 13, and Baron as number 12, as Baron is only really useful if you are also playing Diviner. Not all builds of Tier Element will play Diviner, but the rest of the slots are almost inarguably mandatory. Other cards that you might consider playing are Ash Blossom, DD Crow, Ghost Bell, Foolish Burial Goods, the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation Package, Shadal cards for making Winda, and probably others that I'm forgetting right now. But there will be a lot of time to refine this deck and get the most out of it. For now, let's just have fun with what we got. We get to play Tier Lemon again, and that, that just makes me so happy. Bye-bye, <laughs> YouTube.